Okay, so uh, as we uh, already mentioned it, I think this morning uh, money is a big topic for research. So this uh, session is really dedicated to funding scheme for your uh, PhD or your postdoc. And uh, we have the pleasure to welcome four uh, representatives of funding agencies, I would say. And uh, because he's got uh, to leave uh, after his presentation, we will start with a French-Italian university, Mr. Arditi, if you can start. Thank you very much, Berenice, for organizing this meeting and for giving us the opportunity to present uh, with some details the schemes uh, of support uh, that are managed, offered by the uh, French, uh, Franco-Italian University, University, Università Italo-Francese, Université Franco-Italienne. So, as I said this morning, I don't know how to move like this. Yes, uh, it was created uh, tw about 20 years ago by an intergovernmental agreement and started its activities in 2001. It's not a real physical university. It's more an agreed and joint funding scheme. And uh, it, uh, its objectives are to promote, to foster mobility and scientific a collaboration between French and higher uh, and Italian higher edu educational institutions and also research centers. So I leave it to you to read quickly what is written on this slide and will not reread it. I give you a few seconds to look at it and uh, move on because I would like to give you some more details on the various schemes that we are offering. So one of them is the Vinci, Vinci Leonardo da Vinci program, and it has uh, four branches. One is uh, devoted to, uh, as I said this morning, there are no programs that regard the bachelor level all programs that are supported by the Franco-Italian universities, uh, university regard the master level of the d or the doctoral level and the postdoc. So that's uh, uh, adjusted to the audience here. So the master binational curricula, uh, some joint degree program between French and Italian universities can uh, receive support up to uh, 30,000 euros per project. And this uh, money is available to promote exchange of teachers and mobility in general. Now we move on to the PhD students program. And this, uh, in this scheme, the amount is smaller. It's uh, in average 5,000 euros projects but it does not fund the research activities itself, we insist on that. It only finances in the framework of Thes en co-tutelle, Thesi in co tutela so uh, PhDs in joint supervision, leading to a doctorate in both countries, in both universities, the French and the Italian university, on a joint project, then these 5,000 euros can serve to promote the mobility of the PhD student. Now we have uh, the third scheme. The third scheme, as opposed to the second scheme, does not fund only the mobility, but it funds the stipend of the PhD student. That's why it's approximately, really approximately 20,000 uh, euros per year. Of course, this is done in accordance with the difference in legal systems and social security systems in France and in Italy. In France, PhD students have a work contract and they contribute to their pension fund. In Italy, it's more like a scholarship, but uh, 
letting aside these differences, this funds the research, the PhD students, him or herself. And now we have a program that is uh, that regards postdocs, and oh, that postdocs, and this project aim at supporting a postdoc, of course, for a, a postdoc from a French, a doc from a French university uh, doing mobility in Italy or vice versa, and uh, in order to have a sort of post postdoc <laughs> position or postdoc position aiming at providing him a path towards a more uh, a less precarious uh, position okay now we, you have some a few ideas on the schedule uh, the uh, op opening uh, uh, op the, the website will open for the next year um, oh, oh opened a few days ago on December 6, 2017. And the deadline for registration is February 6 at uh, 2018. It's very important to keep the deadline. I saw in the previous presentation someone advised you to start making your or preparing or entering your data on the site before the deadline. It's very important that everything is done much before the deadline because if a document is missing and things like that, you always have time. And the results will be known after a meeting of the uh, Executive Council of, of the uh, University in May. So the results will be known in June. In addition to the four uh, branches or k kinds of programs that are described before, you have another thing, which is perhaps of less uh, important for you in this moment. It's called this, uh, the label. So l the label may or may not uh, include a financial support. Sometimes it's only a label, and getting the label is a proof of quality that can help a program or an activity to receive support from elsewhere, from another source. And this is aiming at facilitating the setting up and the organization of seminars, conferences, etc., exhibition, cultural shows linked to a research program, of course, not any kind of cultural show, or some publication, sometime uh, an important research is made and someone uh, needs a few months to, to write a book or to write some wrap-up articles, etc. So this kind of money or label uh, is, is, is aiming at supporting this kind of initiatives. Here you have the deadline. You can find all these deadline and the detailed description of all these activities on the website, either on the Italian or on the French website of the uh, Italian, Franco-Italian University. We have another scheme which supports the mobility of professors. This is a one side. <laughs> it's not bilateral, it's, it's, it's bilateral, but it's from, for French scientists, for French professors, to be invited to by an Italian university to, to participate to the teaching of a degree leading program. And um, it's, it can be up to 6,000 euros, but that has to be matched by an equal or higher uh, contribution from the receiving university itself. And another scheme that you will also find in the case of the Franco-German uh, activities is called the Partenariat Hubert-Curien. In the case of Germany, it's called Procop. And in the case of Italy, it's called Galileo. Uh, I, I don't know if Procop is a German scientist. I don't think so. But Galileo is certainly an Italian scientist that we all know. And uh, it, it, it is a program in which some 
research, ongoing research programs uh, involving uh, two universities, or at least two universities, one French and one Italian university, receive some limited support, an average of 3,600 in the last call uh, euros. Here we wrote 4,000 euros in average. And uh, they can receive funding to support their mobility. Okay, the, the, and uh, on the Italian side, it's, it's managed by the Franco-Italian University. On the French side, it's managed by Campus France and by the Ministry for Higher Education and Research. So here you can you see the contact, both the website, at least the French website, and the contact. And here you have two ladies that I would like to introduce to you. Two ladies are the people who actually uh, are the supporting staff and they have helped also in organizing this meeting in preparing the presentation that I'm making and thank them a lot for that. So, uh, Ilaria and uh, Clarisse, and they came from Turin for these two days. Uh, their French counterpart from uh, Grenoble was not able to travel because she's she will, uh, she she will be uh, bearing. She is bearing a baby and cannot travel in the moment. Okay, I thank you very much for your attention. We have a table in the corridor, and these two colleagues can provide any detailed information that you wish that you may need. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Lotta Resch and I'm working for the DAED, the German Academic Exchange Service, for the office here in Paris. Um, I'm quite happy to present you today the different funding schemes for PhD, stu PhD students and postdocs who want to go to Germany for a research stay. And first of all, I would like to know who of you has yet been in Germany to conduct research. Please sign up. One person, two, two, okay. And who of you would maybe be interested to go to Germany to do research for a postdoc or a PhD? Okay, maybe 10, 15 persons. I hope that there will even be more after this presentation and that you will be, a, yeah, that you will be interested in going to Germany thanks of all the funding possibilities that you will see. Yeah, I first wanted to present quickly the German research landscape, but as my colleague from the French Embassy in Berlin did this this morning quite in detail, I will skip this part. You can just maybe remember that there is a big, uh, great budget for research and development in Germany of 19 billion euros in, thousand, in 2015, and um, there is a quite complex system of... Um, of funding opportunities, of research institutions and of universities. There are three pillars of the German research sector, sector that are the universities, the non-university research institutes and the industrial research. And you can find funding in the three parts of, yeah, parts of the research landscape in Germany. Yeah, as you can see here, the number of international researchers in Germany has been increasing. In 2016, Germany welcomed 84,000 international researchers in Germany, and we are making a lot of efforts to attract even more international researchers and hope and hope that in the next year there will be a we will be more than 90,000 international researchers and maybe some of you will be a part of this 
increasing number. Yeah, the DID, the German Academic Exchange Service, Office Allemand d'Echange Universitaire. I don't know who of you has ever heard of us. Could you just sign up? Okay, six persons, okay. So <laughs> I will, yeah, we, we, are re we are representing quite a lot in, in different parts of France and we hope that we will be known in Germany. Every, yeah, in Germany, every researcher knows the DID. In France, not yet, but we hope that you, you will spread the word and uh, your colleagues as well. Yeah, the DID is a self-governing organization of German universities. Our members are the universities, 239 member universities and their student bodies. And um, we are organized, we have a, our headquarter is in Bonn and we have also a, an office in Berlin and around 70 um, regional offices and information centers all over the world. We are represented in around 60 countries and we have one office here in Paris as well. So if you have any questions about scholarships, going to Germany for your research, you can just come along to the DRD France. We are based here in Paris. I told it yet this morning. We are based in since the beginning of this year at the Sorbonne University. Uh, in the Maison de la Recherche, Maison Rue Serpente. It's really in the heart of Paris, uh, next to the metro station Saint-Michel. So if you have any question, you can contact us by mail or even come around to, uh, to ask questions and to have information about research and funding in Germany. Our missions here in France and as well in the rest of the world are first awarding scholarships and mentoring our scholarship holders and the former scholarship holders. So we have a network of former scholarship holders that can help you also to find a job afterwards, after the, the grant. We are also promoting the German language in France and in all the other parts of the world. And we are also there to build, like, to dialogue and to con as a consulting service if you have any questions. So, um, yeah, feel free uh, to come to come around or to contact me or my colleagues here in, 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 in Paris if you want to have more information. Yeah, the, the idea, one of our missions is to award scholarships under the logo scholarships for the best. We are supporting um, students, researchers and artists from Germany and abroad. That's to say we have scholarship for German persons who want to go abroad and from person uh, from abroad who want to go to Germany. That's to say that um, we support over 100,000 students um, and researchers east each year. And since the foundation in 1950, um, around two million scholars have been, yeah, have received DID funding for a research stay in Germany or abroad. Yeah, so the DID promotes outstanding researchers from Germany and abroad with all all our programs, we have over 500 <laughs> programs of scholarships and possibilities of funding. I will just present a little part, selected part of all these scholarships. Um, our, in general, we had the question yes this morning or for at the moment. Sp the sp our sponsorship decisions are based on the actual, your achievements and qualifications, that's to say, your career, your notes, but also your research project. And we have no quotas for disciplines, so it's open for all the disciplines. There's no discrimination for so yeah, social, uh, social science and humanities or hard sciences. It's open to all the disciplines and it's all about individual projects. I had this question several times this morning. If you want to apply for one to one of our grants, you apply as an individual person, so it's you who propose a project and you contact uh, colleagues in Germany to, uh, to construct your, pro your research project. And then if you have the contact in Germany, you can apply for a DID grant or another grant of a German institution. Um, yeah. In, in general, you can apply from the country in which you live and work in for at least one year. So 
even yeah, if you come from another country but live in France, you can apply here and you have the same chances to have a scholarship from the DID France. If you go live in another country or go to another country, you can apply from the other country where you live in. So it's not about, um, about your citizenship, it's always about your, the country of residence from which you apply. So it's quite open-minded. Yeah, so we, no? Yeah, so I will talk now about the specific research grants for PhD students and postdocs who want to apply from France for a research stay in Germany. We have um, two research grants that are addressed to PhD students and as well postdocs. Um, it's a one year grant of, ten of seven to 10 months in Germany or a short-term short -term grant for a short stay of one to six months in Germany. For both of them, you have um, mm, a scholarship amount of 1,000 euros per month, plus additional allowances like insurance and travel grant and, and um, grants for your um, money for your, your family in your research. And this amount of 1,000 euros per month will be created in the end of the of the next year and um, it's quite important as well as my colleague said to the deadlines are quite important if you want to apply for the long-term grant of one year you have you can apply once a year at the 31st of January so you have one month and a half left now to apply for the short-term grant you can apply twice a year until February 15th and September 15th. So as well, you have like kind of two months left to to apply. What is important for us is first your qualification for sure, the project you propose. But it's important for the um, for the selection committee to see if it that is really important for you to go to Germany. So that there is a need for you to go to Germany because in the lab, for example, you have specialists or a machine which was you have to work or you need to consult some books or information you can only find in Germany. So when you apply, you can you should always mention why you absolutely wh why you want absolutely to go to Germany and why it's really important for your for your project. In general, it is not necessary, absolutely necessary to um, to um, speak German in the most in most labs, you almost all the people speak English, but we also finance um, German classes for you so that you can yeah that you can e easily much more easily integrate in the German society. We have also a scholarship for Kututel students if you are uh, yeah if you are in a Kututel. You can you can apply for 18 months stays in Germany until the 31st of January, and we have my colleague who is from the Franco-German University who has other funding schemes for these kind of Kututel PhD. We have another um, program that should be quite interesting for most of you, for the for those of you who want to go to Germany for a postdoc project. It's called Prime Postdoctoral Researchers International Mobility Experience. The specific, speci it, uh, what is special about this um, program? It's not a grant, it's not a scholarship, but it's um, it's a work contract. So um, you can go to Germany for six months and then twelve months to another country, but you have a contract and a, s a German salary at like other postdocs in Germany. So this is quite interesting and you can yeah you can see the value is quite high and um, you can uh, apply until May 2018. Then there is a joint scholar research fellowship between the DRD and the Leibniz Association. It's for postdocs and junior researchers who want to go to Germany to in one of the Leibniz institutes. There are 89 Leibniz institutes with a lot of different profiles and in, in almost all the disciplines. So you can check their website and see if there is one institute that should be could be interesting for your profile, for your discipline, and then you can check the website and 
apply for one of them and then you can stay in Germany for one year and have a fellowship of 2,000 euros per month and also German class to, to um, work on your German knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the other colleagues told about it. There is the Franco-German partnership Uber Curien that is called Prokop. It's not a German researcher, but apparently it's the restaurant in Paris where they decided to create this Franco-German uh, fellowship and it's a cooperation between the French ministries and the DID. The objective is to support the scientific and technological exchanges between re research groups of the two countries. Research labs of all disciplines can apply to finance their mobility for a joint research project. You can apply until June 2018 and for all the French applicants you can find all the information on the site of Campus France. I will only give a quick overview of other funding schemes because I think I have only two minutes <laughs> left. Um, and you, but you will always find the information on the website and then have an information desk over there in the gallery so you can just to see, come along and, uh, and ask questions. There is the DFG, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. It's the self-governing organization for science and research in Germany, like the INR in France, that offers a lot of grants and work contracts. You have also the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. It's a really important, important foundation in Germany that offers research fellowships and awards for postdoctoral post and experienced researchers. And they have also a very important network of former scholarship holders that can help you to on your further career. You have then the Sierra, Centre, Inter Centre Interdisciplinaire d'Études et de Recherche sur l'Allemagne. It's a Franco-German research center that offers mobility grants, but also workshops for researchers in human and social sciences. And there is also the Centre Marc Bloch that has been presented quickly this morning in Berlin that offers also a network and mobility grants for researchers in social and human sciences between France and Germany. Then you have the European Union. There will be other presentations who will present the different funding schemes in detail. Then you have the Franco-German University. And there are the grants of the big four. The big four are the, the institutions that has, have been extra university institutions have been presented this morning. And they have a lot of um, funding possibilities. They have grants and um, work contracts. So you should check their websites and see if there are some institutes that work in your discipline. And to finish, I would like to give some information source to websites where you can prepare your research stay in Germany and where you can find grants and jobs. First of all, there's the website researchingermany.de. It's really, it's a really complete yeah, s website where you can find all the information linked to a research stay in Germany. If it's about funding or the practical issues of your stay in Germany, you should absolutely visit this website. There is also the DID database in France on our website didfrance.fr. You have the DID database in general where other funding schemes. You have Araxis and you have the site PhD Germany for all, for those of you who want to do the whole PhD in Germany. And there is the website academics.de that offers uh, current job offers in academia in, in Germany. And if you need, yeah, ne you can find all this information on the website research in Germany that I presented just 20 seconds before. And you have to pursue funding your research in Germany that, that is also exposed on the information desk over there. I have a lot, maybe most of you have yet seen that there are a lot of, of information flyers and information material that you can take along to, to prepare yourself for a research day in Germany. And I thank you very much for your attention and you can ask questions afterwards at the end of the session and then you can also come along to the information desk over there. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone, and uh, thank you for to the organizers for allowing me to, to present the uh, Maeskodowska Curie actions today. 
Um, since uh, you have all at least started your PhD, and some of you have already finished your PhD, uh, I, start, I chose to uh, focus um, my presentation on two aspects of the uh, Marie Skłodowska career actions, which are going to be the IF individual uh, fellowships and the co-fund postdocs. So we'll have a look into that. Um, first, to give you a little bit of context, um, uh, the Marie Curie actions are part of the first pillar uh, called uh, Scientific Excellence of the Horizon 2020 program. Horizon 2020 is the biggest uh, funding program in the world. Uh, it's run by the European Commission and it funds uh, research at the level of 80 billion uh, euros. And as all programs from the first pillar uh, dealing with scientific excellence, Marie actions are open to any fields, any discipline. And even though uh, we all know Marie Curie was a chemist and a physicist, uh, it's open for all disciplines, whether you are uh, PhD students in, in, in law or researcher in law or in history or anthropology or engineering, whatever, you are eligible for this kind of programs, just like for the um, ERC program. Uh, since we don't have much time, I'm not going over the other two pillars, but if you have any questions, I can answer later on as well. So, um, the Marius Kodowska Curie actions at a glance. What are they funding and why, why are they being proposed? Uh, they, they aim at, at helping researchers improve their competencies by following innovative training uh, programs abroad whether in public or private research institution, or in a company, or in an NGO, or in a hospital, in a different kind of institution. And the goal is to produce better science with better social and economical impact. Uh, as I said, all disciplines are eligible, and also all ages and all nationalities. Whether even you don't need to be European to have access to these grants, and uh, you, you, can, you can be a researcher in your 40s and your 50s, and you can still apply to um, the following grants. The main criteria that, that evaluators look at when you're applying to these programs are, of course, excellence, excellence of the researchers, excellence of the host institutions, uh, innovative training to complement the researchers' initial training in the case of uh, individual fellowships, uh, exposure to non-academic sector, uh, uh, both in the training program and uh, to uh, improve the employability of the PhD grantees. That is linked to the fact that the European Commission uh, uh, wants to fund people to get a high, high level of scientific knowledge corresponding to a PhD, but not necessarily to work as a professor or as a scientist in a public in research institution. Uh, so that's why you need to have all these additional training to maybe work in a company or work in another kind of environment. Uh, of course, Marie Curie, uh, Marie Skłodowska Curie Actions is a mobility program, so it, it's based on international mobility, which means that you can apply to be hosted in an institution in a country where you have not spent more than 12 months during the th last three years. So, for example, if you have done your PhD, your three years of PhD in France, if you want to apply to this, you will have to look at opportunities outside France. Now, I'll get a little bit more specific. So, the Marie Curie actions are um, indeed four different actions. So, the, f the first one, Innovative Training Networks, deals with training PhDs. So, I'm not going to be talking about it today. I assume you are already past this stage. Or the IF, so that's what we're going to be talk talking about to today. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about the RISE program either. Uh, it's Research and Innovation Staff Exchange. It's a program that allows for mobility for any kind of staff involved in research, but when they are already hired by an, an institution. And the co-fund, which is more of a strategic funding tool, uh, the European Commission helps uh, institutions uh, get more funding if they uh, intend on applying the Marie Curie uh, principles. Um, I will get back to this because they, this, uh, this action can also lead to opportunities for you. 
but the main uh, the main topic I wanted to talk about today is the individual fellowships, uh, which are so grants that are given to individual based on one research project, and you have like four different ways of applying to individual fellowships. The most common and the most funded way is the European uh, standard, uh, European fellowship standard, which means that you're applying to uh, a university or a research center in Europe. Whatever your nationality, whatever your discipline again, you are just applying to do your research project in uh, one institution in Europe. And it means that you are uh, preparing and your application and preparing your project with the help of uh, uh, a supervisor in the host institution. Uh, I will tell you more about this later on, but uh, basically your application is uh, an application that you uh, prepare uh, with the help of the supervisor. This is essential because that's one of the criteria for the success of this um, um, fellowship. Uh, I'm not going to be talking too much about the second one, uh, which is uh, career return or reintegration. It's it's a special uh, focus for people who have stopped being researchers for a while and they want to start over. They want to come back uh, either after like another type of job, another type of occupation, or uh, for the uh, return aspect. It's for researchers who have been uh, working outside of Europe and they want to receive some help to come back. I assume since you are here, you are already in Europe. Um, the third one is interesting. Uh, it's a special um, uh, evaluation panel for people who want to do their research projects within companies, within uh, SMEs or within NGOs, a hospital, anything which is a non-academic institution. Uh, this is, uh, even though it's, it's not the most funded uh, device, it is very uh, much supported by the European Commission, again, because uh, they want to improve the um, ratio of PhD grantees who work in, uh, in other organizations than, than uh, academic institutions. And they have a, they have a very good um, success rate. Uh, last but not least, uh, global fellowships, uh, it's uh, a, a very interesting as well uh, device. It helps you uh, uh, apply for uh, funding to do your research projects outside Europe. That means you can apply to do your research project in the US or in China or in Africa or anywhere in the world. And the European Commission will fund two years, up to two years for your, your project uh, in that institution, but also they will fund an extra year to make sure you come back with your new skills, with your new network, with everything you've learned in that other institution. So that's that's something that is uh, which is uh, not well known either, and it's uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, a few words about the Cofund postdocs. And so as I told you, it's more a strategic tool for institutions who uh, want to get extra funding from the Commission uh, in exchange of applying their the Marius Kodaskakuri uh, principles. But for researchers, that means for you, uh, basically it translates into uh, contracts, which are very similar to the, uh, the uh, individual fellowship contracts. And it's just... The, the only thing that changes for this contract is that part of the money is from the country where you're applying and part of the money comes from the European Commission. But for you, basically, it doesn't change anything. You have a contract to do your research project in an institution. So uh, that is one more possibility. And uh, institutions which are selected uh, by the European Commission for this program, uh, they receive funding for four years. And within those four years, they can higher researchers uh, with that money. Um, the contractual elements, so uh, a few things that I have already said, but um, so the European Fellowships and CoFund, you have, you can apply for projects from one to two years and you will get the uh, corresponding contract. Global Fellowship, the same plus the additional year to come back to Europe. Uh, whatever the country, you may you may l go from France to 
Argentina and you might come back to Italy or Germany or any country in Europe, it works. Um, so the European Commission is very uh, uh, generous with uh, the, the salaries and with the uh, mobility allowance. Uh, if you are married, if you have children, you get extra allowance and they also give quite uh, decent uh, uh, funding for the institutions and for the training that helps with uh, this program. I'm not getting too much into the details for the co-fund. That's uh, the element that the European Commission brings and of course the national entity adds up to reach the, um, the threshold. So where can you find these opportunities? Um, for you, you need to, the first step is to look at the Your Access, Your Access Jobs portal. So youraccess.org and you will find it, there's a, they have a big database of jobs and that's one of the places where you will find every, every project which is funded by the European Commission uh, has uh, the obligation to publish their offers on this portal, so that's a great way. The other possibility would be a more proactive approach. Uh, you have looked at the database and you don't see anything that fits your project and that fits what you want to do, uh, but you know someone, uh, you know a professor uh, from the literature you've been studying, you know someone that you would like to be working with, and you can get in touch with them and say, hey, I want to apply to a Marie Skodowska Curie Action Fellowships. Would you, b would you agree to be my uh, supervisor? And if so, we just need to work a few months together to build an application, and then the European Commission will decide whether or not you get the money, but that's, that's another way to find uh, an opportunity and to create really your own opportunity um, in that institution. And in any way, uh, you, you will have support from the European office or the research office in that institution, so you need to get in touch with that famous professor you want to work with and he ask him or her uh, to get in touch with the European office to help you deal with the application. And of course, NCPs like me, like what I do in France, you have NCPs in all the other countries, uh, so you, have, you can benefit from this support as well. If you have all the ingredients uh, to apply to the uh, to any Marie Skłodowska Curie action, you need to get on the research and innovation portal by the European Commission. That's where it gets technical. So here again, don't do it alone. Ask for support at your European office. Um, staff over there are trained and they are used to do this. And uh, anyway, you don't have all the information that you need. So. Uh, again, you, you will need to uh, enter this, this uh, portal, but with the help of uh, trained staff, it will be much easier, I guarantee you. This is what it looks like. Part A is more administrative. Part B is really focused on the uh, scientific pro uh, program and project. And as far as the calendar, so every year the calendar is about the same, one or plus two weeks. Um, so I highlighted just the um, individual fellowship calendar for uh, 2018. And uh, my advice if you is you start as soon as possible, possibly w a year before. And we're about, uh, we're not even six months till the, uh, the, uh, the action opens, but you have, you have time if you, if you know who you want to work with, if you know where you want to apply, you have time now to start working on your application for the uh, September 12th deadline. You will find these uh, resources uh, on my presentation, so that's the French portal for Horizon 2020, in addition to the, uh, the portal by the European Commission. This is the contact for the uh, NCP uh, team on Marie Curie uh, at the French level and my contact later uh, below and uh, as my colleagues if you have any questions feel free to ask either now or later on uh, this afternoon or tomorrow. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody.
first I would like to introduce myself. My name is Eva Maria Hengsbach and I work for the Franco-German University in Saarbrücken in the department study programs and doctoral programs. And today I will present the doctoral programs. Um, yeah. But at first I want um, to explain the function of the FGU. The oh, better now. <laughs> Um, the Franco-German University is a network of affiliated member universities in France and Germany and its administration is based in Saarbrücken. It was founded as an international institution by means of an intergovernmental uh, agreement, the Weimarer Abkommen. And it provides ex expert guidance on Franco-German universities relations with the aim of enhancing and, uh, university and research cooperation. Now I would like to give you an overview about our funding programs in the research sector. Um, we have got two areas, the doctoral programs and the networking opportunities, like the scientific events. But today I only talk about um, the doctoral programs, like the Cotutel de Thes, the Franco-German graduate schools, and the Franco-German PhD track programs. At first, I would like to explain the program Cotutel de Thèse. What does this mean? Well, a Franco-German Cotutel system allows the doctoral students to write a dissertation under the supervision of at least one professor in Germany and another in France. And doctoral students are awarded a doctoral degree from both institutions after passing the joint defense. In the end, they, are, they won't have two titles, so they're not um, doctor, doctor, because they do just one thesis. But they have got the degrees from both institutions. Um, now I would like to present the procedure of a co-tutel. At the beginning, the doctoral student has to search for two supervisors, um, one in France, one in Germany. And then the student has to define the topic, uh, the research topic, of the co tutel with them. And afterwards, the student can apply to uh, admission to the co tutel at his universities. And then the co tutel agreement has to be established, which is often the hardest step in, the, in this procedure. It can um, last one year. Um, but the co tutel agreement is the legal basis of the co tutel. And as soon as the doctoral student has this agreement, he or she can apply at the Franco-German University and if everything fine, um, goes fine, uh, obtain funding. Yeah, as I just said, as soon as the Cotitel de Thes agreement is signed by both institutions, um, it has to be handed in. Um, the last signature of this agreement must not be more than one year old. And application papers have to be written in French and, and German, and English English is permitted in exceptional case, for example, for the students who do a co tutel in the domain of um, science or, yeah. Um, the amount of funding is up to 5,000 euros, up to 4,000 euros to cover additional expenses during the doctoral studies for the um, mobility of the student, and up to 1,000 euro to cover the cost of the joint defense, for example, to pay the, um, yeah, the jury, the cost of the jury. Yeah. Now I would like to give you some facts and figures. Um, the number of new projects founded every year since 2005. Um, as you can see on the screen, we founded uh, 41 Cotutel de Thes in the last year. This year it's about the same, more or less. And on this slide we can see the distribution per discipline of new projects of the Cote de Thes uh, in 2016. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the most of the Cote de Thes were in the field of humanities and uh, also science. Yeah, now I would like to give you some information about the Franco-German graduate schools. Um, yeah, in order to promote cooperation in the field of Franco-German research, the FGU supports graduate schools and all academic disciplines 
and it's also possible to associate a third country. The funding primarily supports the research activities and travel opportunities of doctoral students. The call for, the call for application is every year at the end of October. Yeah, who is entitled to submit an application? French Ecole Doctorale and all German institutions offering structured doctoral programs. The funding period is four years since the last year, but it's also possible to submit an application to Renewal. You can see on the slides the amount of funding. It is composed of found of infrastructure, for example, to pay the travel costs of the professors. Um, grants to cover the um, travel expenses for the doctoral students. And we have also international scholarships, but only for proposals which have been evaluated excellent. Now I want to like, I won't like to continue about to, um, with the PhD track programs. In the Franco-German PhD track programs, the two years of the master's program are combined with the further three years spent on a doctoral degree to form a fifth year study period in total. And supporting the students' mobility is one of the main priorities. The program is open to all kinds of disciplines and the association with a third country partner is also possible. And the call for application is also in the end of October as well as for the Franco-German graduate schools. who is entitled to submit an application, universities or non-university research institutions offering a program with which leads to a master or an equivalent degree, institutions providing a doctoral training which on the French side is part of an école doctorale. The funding period is uh, four years and uh, it's possible to submit an application to Renewal. The amount of funding is also funds, uh, funds of infrastructure, mobility grant for the doctoral students and for the students, and also international scholarships for applications which have been evaluated uh, excellent. Yeah, in the end, I want to like to I want to give you some uh, figures about our research network. We have got um, this year we funded uh, 23 Franco-German graduate schools. Eight of them um, in cooperation with the third country. We have got 10 PhD track programs and about uh, 150 doctoral students who are enrolled in a co tutel system. And we promoted um, 80 scientific events for young researchers. Yeah, if you have any questions, um, I will be here today and tomorrow, the whole day. Um, yeah, or you can write me an email. What do you prefer? <laughs> Any questions for our speakers? No. Just an additional remark, please. Uh, uh, excuse me if I have missed the information from you. Uh, I would just la like to add that in every university there are um, engineering uh, for international projects for research, and uh, all of you can also get information in your university about uh, European uh, programs. Maybe you have studied I yet. Excuse me, so <laughs> I missed the information. Excuse me. I just, I just said it, it's worth repeating, so no worries. Hi, I just want to know if you have numbers of uh, success for the applications to Marie Curie. Yes, um, so the 
success rate for individual fellowships is uh, around 13.5 percent, and it's even more it's it's more interesting if you for if you target uh, uh, working with a company or a non-academic actor, the success rate is above 30 percent. 30. Hi, my name is Raja. Uh, I would like to know like, uh, whether a startup can do a PhD program. I'm a master's student <laughs> right now. After all, I want to start up and uh, parallelly, can I do a PhD program or not? Is, is the question aimed at Germany specifically or in general? Uh, in France. In France? I, c I, can, I can give you an answer for the Marie Curie programs. Uh, in the ITN uh, action, yes. uh, there's a possibility to, be, uh, to do your PhD with co-supervision from a university and from uh, someone in, 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 in a company, for example. So in a startup, it works. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's possible, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to apply for a PhD position in Germany, you should look on the website PhD Germany. There is a list of all the different possibilities of funding and all the institutions that, uh, that offer PhD positions. So in Germany, it's absolutely possible to do your PhD. In general, you should always try to have a look quite early. You should at, uh, have like one year or six months to prepare your, your application and to prepare the, the research for funding. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. Um, for, for postdoc application uh, for the uh, Horizon 2020 and for DAD, uh -huh. I, I want to know, uh, f uh, uh, for example, uh, you told us uh, for Horizon 2020, you told us we can um, compare the, some professors and uh, try to do the application on the Horizon 2020. I want to know if, uh, if the candidate holder like us is uh, us the most important to, to, be, to be successful to be successfully get the get the uh, funding, or is the professor the or is the professor the, with the more famous professor, it will be easier to get funded, and uh, 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 yes, this is my question. Yes. Okay. So. Um when when you when you look for a supervisor, you can you can also you can of course look for the the most famous professor in your field, but then one of the criteria that evaluators will look at in your in your file is whether that person has the time to like uh, uh, supervise you properly. So evaluators are researchers, so they know how labs work and they know what it takes to be like uh, famous professors with you know, being uh, solicitations all the time. So uh, the general advice is maybe not aim at you know, the most famous person because we know that person will not have the time to train you for your project. But maybe someone from their team, uh, someone who, has, uh, who works in a, in a uh, competitive institution on this field, uh, that's the advice I would give. But yeah, don't. Th th one of one of the uh, elements that uh, evaluators will look at is the credibility. So if you say that you are going to be working with the best uh, all the time and everything will be uh, magical, but you don't show it and you don't convince it, then people will not will 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 think it's uh, it's not it's not uh, legitimate. And maybe more generally, uh, can you tell us uh, what makes a good application for your uh, grant programs? Uh, first rule is read the rules, because every year you have people who don't read the, all the rules. And um, 
the really the two main important, the two most important elements are uh, the fact that Marie Curie actions are not research programs; they are training programs. So that means that you have to show um, all the skills that you are going to learn in the host institution, and and the complementarity of what you bring to them as well, what you bring to the team that you are going to be working with for the next one or two years. So that's one aspect. Um, of course, you have to respect the uh, international mobility rules, so you have to uh, target a country where you have not spent more than 12 months in the past three years. And, and um, most importantly, uh, the, 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 the other element uh, would be uh, about communication. Um, now, uh, we, all the European deputies at the European Parliament, they are all debating about how much money they are going to put in the next framework program, the FP9, you might have heard of. And they want to improve, again, the budget for research. But what they, what they want is they want to make sure that the average European citizen knows what's being done with their money, because this is all public money from the taxes. So they want to increase every researcher that receives money from the European Commission. They want to make sure that they communicate about their project. They want to communicate to, uh, of course, their peers. Uh, they want to communicate to like, scientific uh, audiences. But they also want them to disseminate their knowledge to the primary school, to uh, campus radio, to other kinds of students. They want to uh, give promotion of the, of the funding program to the local newspaper, to any kind of audience, like uh, the um, uh, wider audiences than just the academic and the scientific audiences. So that's one very important element in your application is your communication plan. And say, OK, I'm going to go to that conference, and to that conference, and to that conference, but you are also going to participate to the researchers' night, uh, la fête de la science in France, uh, this kind of events that that widens the uh, the uh, audience of, of your project, and also uh, because there, are, in Europe, we are very concerned with uh, the the lack of uh, girls uh, choosing scientific uh, professions. So if if you, especially if you are a female researcher, you will be asked to play the role of, uh, of an example to maybe young girls and to show them in the schools, at the primary schools, that yes, even if you are a woman, you can be a sp specialist in engineering, you can be a specialist in nanotechnology or history or any field, and that you give the idea in, in those young girls' minds that they can become scientists as well one day. So that's one very important issue as well in your applications. Communication and communication for gender equality. Good morning. Uh, so thank you for your presentation. Um, I would like to know if you could give us a little more information about the Global Fellowship uh, Grant. Because you say that uh, you have up to two years go to outside of Europe, and after you are looking to come back this research in Europe, um, how uh, you expect to present this proposal? I mean, do you need to propose that you go to this country, and after you have some idea, how do you come back to Europe, and which lab or which country will apply to, or how this works in, in the grant actually? So maybe it's it's getting technicals. Maybe I can answer your questions okay, later on. But basically, it's just it's just about convincing your evaluators that you have a plan. So you, your your project will be evaluated on your on what you want to do outside Europe, but you have to show already that you have identified institutions where you might come back afterwards. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about it later maybe. Uh, thank you very much for your comment regarding the, um, the positions open to, to researchers, to female researchers, and in fact I have a question. I was wondering if at higher positions there is a kind of uh, 
gender equality or if it still is uh, dominated by men, because I think this is also a way of discouraging the young researchers when they see that, in fact, you cannot have the same uh, chances anyway, like as if you are a man. So this is um, a question coming from someone who did a PhD and someone who works on the master and PhD programs and who is very interested by the by empowerment of girls and women and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. If I did well, the question. We have, um, in the DID, we have no quotas for, n neither for disciplines, neither for, no, for men or women, so that we make no difference. And we, for the moment, we don't have any programs or projects to, to foster, to have more women in, in, in science. But I know that in Germany, they have some projects, other, Foundation have some projects to, to do so. We, for the moment, we don't have. In the Frankfurt, in the Frankfurt German universities, we have um, about 60% um, women at the, our programs. 60% women who are enrolled in a co system. So the majority uh, are women. And as far as the Marie Skudaska reactions, uh, gender uh, equity is, is one of the criteria that they look. So now, uh, if if, um, if if you if if a consortium, for example, applies for funding, they will have to show that half of the selection committee are female. Uh, that you will uh, look at at the possible uh, balance between uh, uh, beneficiaries. But it's uh, it's not compulsory, of course, because depending on the fields, sometimes you have, in some fields you have 100% female, and in other fields you have 100% male. So, but it, that's one of the criteria that which is being looked at for European programs. Yes. Hello. First, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for all the useful information you gave us today, and my question is very specific, actually. If you have already won, um, let's say, a European Commission Fellowship, are you still allowed to apply for an individual fellowship? Uh, excuse me, can you please p uh, put the microphone closer to your mouth? Okay. Thanks. So, uh, the question is this. If you first have won a European Commission uh, Fellowship before, are you still allowed to apply in the MAX plan? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, thank you. Um, I got a question for Marie Curie from Funding Scheme. Is there like a positive list of like uh, research institutes? And because some institutes are like mixed between private and public. So uh, is there a list? What can we see if the institute that we look for is uh, within the public funding scheme or more like company public scheme? Uh, there's no list. But we will look in the application. Uh, when you apply for any kind of Marie Curie uh, funding, you apply in the name of one institution, and the, that institution is registered at the European Commission under some kind of status. So it will be that status which will decide whether they are public or private. It's, it depends on the status they chose when they registered on the portal. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask if there is a difference, a big difference between uh, applied math and pure math regarding the funding schemes. Is, is it uh, an equal division between them? Yeah, could you repeat because I'm not sure we understood. If uh, when uh, regarding the funding schemes uh, between applied math and pure math, is uh, their e equality, uh, or is it a big gap? I, I wouldn't have the, the, the proportion. Um, it's, it's true that at, um, European programs in general tend to uh, encourage uh, um, cooperations with uh, um, uh, companies and with other kinds of actors. So I would tend to think it, it kind of 
puts the weight on the applied version of math for your field, but it's it's not it's not set in stone. It's So we are going to close this session. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation, your information, funding schemes for researchers. Thank you very, very much.